Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Kelsey. Um, I read a lot of books, so I just thought I would share my thoughts on them. So kind of in honor, just jumping right into today's video, in honor of the new book in the From Blood and Ash series by Jennifer L. Armentrout coming out. Um, unfortunately, devastatingly, mine is still in the mail, um, but I'm very excited to get it. But I figured because the new book in the series just came out, I would just take a second, um, hopefully help someone out here and go over the, I guess, not proper, because, you know, you can read them backwards if you wanted to, but my suggested reading order of, ooh, the From Blood and Ash, Shadow in the Ember series prequel world whatever you want to call it of um JLA's series um so just wanted to quickly go over the order or my suggested reading order because I do think it makes the experience of reading the series better um if you read them in a you know order in which you know they take place in the world chronological order of the world I do think um it's not the best experience so I just wanted to go over the order that I would read them in and that I suggest reading them in and hopefully that helps somebody out who is just trying to get into the this world dip their toes in there are a lot of books and there are more coming out which is crazy but somehow she's able to just crank them out she is kind of I don't want to say unmatched in that but she is so good at just getting books out um you know regularly so um I just wanted to go over the order oh my god I have to keep lifting this um that I would recommend for reading this series okay so just to clarify before I go into the order there are I guess two different series technically going on here but it's all within one world and they I'm gonna use the word overlap because I don't want to give anything away so no spoilers at all in this video it's very important. There will not be any spoilers, um, just the order in which I think you should read them if you're thinking about getting into this series, into this world. So just to clarify, we have two series, right? Blood and Ash, which take pl takes place in, we'll call it modern times right now. And then we have the prequel, A Shadow in the Ember, which take pl takes place, you know, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, whatever years before Blood and Ash does. So you're starting the series I would recommend not starting with the prequel, even though that comes first chronologically. I would recommend starting with Blood and Ash, which is the first book that she wrote. So start here, get on Poppy's journey. This is definitely where you want to start. Um, if you want to hear kind of a synopsis of this series and, you know, my thoughts on it, that's in a different video. I'll link it down below. I don't want to get into that. I don't want this video to be super long, but this is where you want to start book one of From Blood and Ash. From there, you're going to go into the second book of Blood and Ash, which is A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire. So we're still in the kind of modern series. This is going to be book two. We're going to continue to explore Poppy's journey. Again, not giving anything away, um, learning more about her and about everything that's going on around her and who she is, um, continuing with book two. So we still haven't touched the prequel, even though again, that happens chronologically before. After that, you still want to stay with Blood and Ash with the third book, The Crown of Gilded Bones. So again, staying with the Blood and Ash series, we're not touching the prequel yet, continuing on this journey that we're on to really kind of build out what's going on um, with Poppy. So again, focusing purely on Poppy right now. Okay, so everything up to there is probably pretty obvious. You're probably like, why are you making this video? You're just saying read the books, one, two, three, et cetera, et cetera. So this is where it gets, not confusing, but this is where I would, I guess, make a recommendation here. And at that point, after reading book three of Blood and Ash, I would then go back to the prequel of A Shadow in the Ember. So now we're going to go a thousand, whatever, how many years into the past of the world that we've built with Poppy. And we're going to start with A Shadow in the Ember and we're going to learn about Serafina's story. So now we're going to go back. Again, it's the same world, but now we're going to have all new characters pretty much and definitely a new main character. We're going to learn her journey. So it's really important, in my opinion, to go back to this one before you read the fourth book of from Blood and Ash because we're going to start to see maybe a little bit of connection here and I think that having this background for that book is really important. It helps to kind of 
make the story more interesting, more kind of comprehensive. You you care more about certain things. Again, no spoilers because of what you've read in the prequel. So that is definitely super important. Okay, so now we've gone back to the prequel, but we haven't finished From Blood and Hash. This is where it gets a little bit confusing and you could kind of go either way from here. But again, my recommendation here would be to stick with the prequel and then read A Light in the Flame. So now we've done the first three books of Blood and Ash, the first two books of the prequel, A Shadow in the Ember. And again, we're just going to stick with Serafina's story here to kind of, again, build that world, learn a little bit more about her story, the characters and that story before we go back. Because again, as I mentioned, it's all within the same world. So we're going to start to see some ties between the story. So we want to make Blood and Ash kind of better by reading the prequel. The reason that you don't want to read the prequel, though, before you get into any of Blood and Ash and just do a chronological order is because, in my opinion, it does ruin. It will ruin kind of some of the like <gasps> moments of Blood and Ash because you'll kind of go in with a little bit more knowledge than you were maybe supposed to when she originally wrote those books because again, she wrote them first. So it's essentially kind of going in the order that she wrote them, give or take a little bit, not in chronological order. So then once we finish A Light in the Flame, now we're going to go back to Blood and Ash. And we're going to pick up the fourth book in that series, and that's going to be A War, A War of Two Queens, which up until a few months ago was the most recent book in the series. And now she's obviously released the latest one, which then you're going to read right after it, right? So you're kind of going a little bit back and forth, but not too many jumps. It's kind of the first three books of Blood and Ash, the first two of A Shadow in the Ember, and then we're gonna come back with the fourth and fifth book of Blood and Ash. And again, as I mentioned, I just find that this reading experience is just gonna give you the best way to kind of enjoy the books, get everything that you could out of them without ruining anything for you by learning something before you're technically supposed to learn, right? So again, I wouldn't recommend reading them in chronological order. I would stick with the order that I just mentioned. But yeah, that is all I have for today's video. Um, I'm super excited for the next book. Hopefully it comes in the mail soon and get my hands on it. Let me know if this video was helpful. If you end up reading it in this order or if you recommend a different order, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, but that is all I have. Um, please subscribe if you are not already. Please like this video because it really supports my channel and I really appreciate it. And that is all I have, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!